First Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after that he had been asked, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice had to suffer, saying, This chalice is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy <coughs> Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. We have a visitor all the way from Denver with us this morning. And the Mass has been offered for me and Danielle's brother, Sparky Horn. And we have the beautiful miracle of Jesus feeding the 4,000 men, not counting women and children, with seven loaves and a few fish. So as we come to celebrate the great miracle of the Eucharist and to encounter Jesus Christ, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Sparky Horn. Prepare our hearts, we pray, O Lord our God, by your divine power, so that the coming of Christ, your Son, we may be found worthy of the banquet of eternal life and merit to receive heavenly nourishment from his hands, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading from Isaiah 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the, from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is number 23. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, they give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Please stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Galilee, went up the mountain, and sat down there. Great crowds came to him, having with him the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet, and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the deformed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind able to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said to them, my heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I've not wanted to send them away hungry. I do not want to send them away hungry, for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, Where could we ever get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Several things jumped out at me when, when I read this gospel or came to mind. One was a quote from Pope Benedict. I, I think when Pope De Benedict spoke, he really had a great insight into whatever he said. He really was a great scholar. And he said about the Eucharist, he said, The happiness we seek and have a right to has a name and a face. And the name is Jesus present in the Eucharist. The name and face is Jesus present in the Eucharist. That's a beautiful insight. Uh, that's how Jesus feeds us. And this miracle is full of Eucharistic overtones. All the miracles, uh, you know, with food uh, are full of Eucharistic overtones. Like, what, what did he do? He, 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 he took the, uh, the seven loaves, gave thanks, and broke the loaves. It's always in the breaking. It's always in the breaking. Like he said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The breaking is a symbol of death. And, 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 and Jesus had to die. And, and it's by Jesus dying that he's able to continue to feed us. And it's nice to know that God has compassion for us. God has sympathy for us. He had pity on the crowd. They were like sheep without a shepherd. You know, uh, so, so it's nice to know that Jesus is still our good shepherd and he's still feeding us. And it's a fantastic that he instituted the Eucharist so that he could come inside in each of us at every Mass. The sad part of it is so many people don't come and receive Jesus. To me, that's the sad part, that we have so many inactive Catholics. You know, I think if they heard that the Queen was coming or, or, or if the President was coming, or Mick Jagger or one of uh, Dolly Parton was coming to, to, to Most Holy Trinity Church. They'd all be here. But he, every time, every time we have the Mass, Jesus is here. And you get to receive Jesus. And then you're to go out to be walking tabernacles to bring Jesus with you. I mean, it's a fantastic gift that we have. Um, somebody said to me recently, the church needs Fatima. And I said back to the person, our world, our, sorry, I said, our world needs Fatima. And I said back to the person, our world needs Jesus. And that's where our focus should be. Jesus and Jesus now. Where do we get Jesus now? In the Eucharist. In the, in the Word and in, in, in the sacrament. And we should never forget that. What an awesome gift we get when we come to Mass. Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. 
How many did he feed? 4,000 plus, plus the wine. How many did he read? <laughs> that was a trick question. Because he has two miracles that within a couple of chapters for each other. In one, he feeds 5,000, not counting women and children. Today it says 4,000, not counting women and children. How many loaves were there? Seven. And the other miracle, how many were there? That's right, five loaves and two fish in the other one. Uh, yeah, so anyway, the, 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 the very similar miracles, but uh, the numbers are a little bit different. So that, that was a trick question, okay? <laughs> let, let, you need to pay attention. <laughs> please, stand, please stand as we pray. Let us pray for Sparky Horn, for the for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have so many sick people, so many people requesting prayers. I just had a phone call from Wilson Nagel. He was requesting prayers for he and his wife. I know I saw Ralph Baldwin yesterday, and he still in very uh, needs our prayers. And of course, Pat uh, needs our prayer. And so many of our sick, we lift them all up in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the success of our retreat this Saturday. We pray that lots and lots of people will attend and be drawn closer to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray that the Supreme Court will uphold the Mississippi rule to grant the right to life of all babies in the womb after 15 weeks of pregnancy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the continued success of our new church. And we pray that we can have our Mass in there at Christmas Eve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continued success of our quad process, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all inactive Catholics, may they come to realize what they're missing by not coming to church. They're missing out on Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity present in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and all its opportunities. We lift up in prayer all with special needs as we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become <coughs> our spiritual, our bless, the body of Christ forever. Spiritual food. I was fixing to sneeze there, and I was trying not to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all the souls of the earth. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today I have a quote from St. Bonaventure, Bishop and Doctor of our Church, and it fits perfectly with today's Gospel. He said, 
My Lord, who are you and who am I that I should dare to take you into my body and soul? A thousand years of penance and tears would not be sufficient to make me worthy to receive so royal a sacrament even once. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when his once for his disciples are now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave him thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat the spirit and drink this God, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted down unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. May we serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new home. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. 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 The 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ be the same for each other night. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance make senses of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for her. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I was really struck all week by the first reading of Isaiah. Um, I was really struck by the first few verses. And on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all people a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. And it really struck me uh, in three ways. One, I thought about mass, and I'll come back to this on the third point. I thought about the one mass that I've been to that above the rest of my life that just brought complete joy. And it was over 50 years ago, and some of you may know, I think it's the Fenton Catholic Church right down here on uh, um, Kildalim. It had to be 50 years ago. Mom, dad brought us there, four brothers and I. And there was a guy singing with his guitar, Amazing Grace. And that church wasn't big, but every single person in that church was singing. I have never felt as close to God as a young child as I did in that church that day. And I'm going to make a point. I think that's the way it is every day. But it goes back to the reading. What struck me as I read the reading was it was during Thanksgiving. And as always, I was with my grandchildren on Thanksgiving. There was 13 of us at my mother, at my oldest daughter's house, seven grandchildren. And when you talk about rich food, choice wines, juicy, rich food, we had smoked turkeys, ham. It's one of those things that where the table's full of food. I don't know where it comes from. It's like the seven loaves and two fish. It's always there, no matter how much you eat, there's even more. But one of the jobs I had was to take care of my grandchildren at night. My Father, my brother, my son-in-law had to go uh, work an off-duty deputy sheriff role on a Friday night. And so when I was putting them to bed, way past their bedtime, and way, way past my bedtime, <laughs> I said, okay, I told them a story, which I always do. And then I said, we don't say our prayers. So I looked at Sophia, I said, you go, Sophia, four-year-old. She started saying, bless us, O Lord, and these are gifts that came out from the city, from my mouth, with the Christ, O Lord. And then her older sister said, Sophia, that's not the prayer for night. She says, I love that prayer, and I'm saying it. <laughs> but think about it. That is for our church, not just for meals. So it hit me. Anna said, uh, Hail Mary. She just loves Mary. And Amy, a 10 year old, said the guardian angel prayer. So I told him to go to sleep. That didn't work. So I said, I'll sit here. And it seemed like hours, but they finally went to sleep. 
I was reflecting on uh, Isaiah's message. <clears throat> I think Mount, that mountain that all of the people at that time were trying to get to where God was with them is daily mass. Or not daily mass, is mass. It's going to church. We get the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus every time we come to mass. What a feast that is, which blows away a Thanksgiving feast. And I was really uh, impressed. Father said what Pope Benedict said, Jesus feeds us through the Eucharist. And he doesn't do it in a uh, downtrodden way. It's a beautiful way. And as I felt 50 years ago uh, at that time, at that mass, I have begun starting to feel that way every time I go to Mass. And I leave just as pumped up and full and vibrant as I've ever been. And I love what Father said towards the end of his homily. We have so many inactive Catholics and we all have an opportunity. We must be walking tabernacles. I found a way through the quad process that has really enlightened me and brought me closer to being a walking tabernacle. So I pray that we each continue to find ways in our own way to be walking tabernacles and intentional disciples and help our inactive Catholics come back to the enormous feast that Jesus Christ gives us at each mass. Amen. Amen. Very good, Kurt. Thank you very much. Your little granddaughter reminded me of, I can't tell you how many times people have come into confession and said, bless us, O Lord. <laughs> and my answer is always the same. I'm sorry, I can't feed you here. I can only forgive you. <laughs> God, God, I can't leave it here. This sounds like my ex-wife. A woman signed up with a computer dating service. Under life, she put water sports and formal attire. A day later, the computer matched her with the penguin. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and renew in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and we shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, instruct our hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in this country.